Hello everyone, so an update here on the Sir Pukov, the Buyanem Corvette in Kaliningrad, which was set on fire by Ukraine a couple of days ago. MT Anderson on Twitter shared this satellite image of Baltisk Naval Base in Kaliningrad. This is where the Sir Pukov was. You can see there's quite a lot of ships here. Now, these aren't going to be used in the Ukraine war, but as you can see, it is a full house with many different ship types. I'm not going to go through them as by and large, they are pretty irrelevant, at least until Ukraine destroys them. But one of interest is at the very bottom. We can see the Sir Pukov is next to a large crane, a large floating crane, should I say. Let's zoom in a bit. So it isn't the clearest of images because of the cloud cover, and it's hard to tell signs of outer damage on the ship itself. But you can see a big floating crane next to it, so this is having repairs being carried out because of a fire. Now, the lack of visible damage on the outside of the ship that we can see is fairly irrelevant because this was an internal fire, not an attack by drones. I'm sure most of you have seen this video by now. It shows the location of the Sir Pukov inside the ship where the fire was started and also the blaze beginning. The fire was said to have destroyed the ship's communications and automation equipment. So even though on the outside it looks okay, the big issue here is the internal damage from the fire, which of course wouldn't show up on satellite imagery. But the fact this is positioned near a crane undergoing repairs suggests that it was damaged in the attack. Now, our next small update. Here's an image again by MT Anderson. This is a Theodosia. You can see the wreck of a Novo Chikask, which was hit by a storm shadow, and a sunken T-43 class training vessel, which was sunk during the same attack. That is still submerged as well. Of interest though isn't these two wrecks, but rather the lack of any warships actually here. In the past, before the attack on the Nova Chikask, we saw ships such as a BNM station here, as well as other smaller patrol boats. The ships here likely used to defend the Crimean Bridge and patrol the Crimean Bridge. Now, it's empty, other than some boring utility craft. So it seems that the Russian Navy has effectively abandoned Theodosia as a base because of that storm shadow strike. Now a quick check of Sevastopol. Here, not much hugely interesting. A bunch of small patrol boats which are used to safeguard the entrance to Sevastopol Arbor are to the left. Among them, a pair of Boyer hovercraft, a Natya class, a Karakert class, a Tarantul class and an Alexandric class. You can also see the tentacle of a Kraken rising up out of the water next to the Bora class hovercraft on the left. To the right, the two Krivaks are stationed here. These provide air defence of the harbour, as well as another Tarantul class and an Alligator class transport ship. This image is a bit more interesting. So after the big Neptune and the Storm Shadow Strike, you can see the pier at Pivdena Bay is empty of ships now, or at least empty of the combat ships. The Pruas that were there and the Ivan Kurz intelligence ship that was hit have all moved. Let's see if the Ivan Kurz appears in later imagery. In the subpen, there are no submarines but a handful of potential future submarines. The dry dock, first we can see the Minx, the Rapua hit by a storm shadow. That's outside of the dry dock. And the Rostov on Don submarine, still in dry dock. A big cargo vessel has been moved into the dry dock vacated by the Minx. Now, repair bay and the ammunition pier. At the repair bay, of the Ivan Kurs, the Azov, and the Konstantin Olshanki. These are some of the ships attacked by Ukraine. None of them are in dry dock, but they are at the repair bay section of Sevastopol, so it hints that they did sustain some damage. At the ammunition pier is the Yamal, which was also attacked. This is the one where the storm shadow impacted on the dock next to it. I'll look at these closer in just a moment. First though, the refueling pier and back bay dry dock. The dry docks are all empty at the moment, with one Natya at the refueling pier, so no Ivan Kurs to be seen. Now, let's take a look at the ships that were reported hit by Storm Shadow. Here, the Konstantin Olshanki and the Azov. No visible signs of damage here that we can see, and this is very clear satellite imagery. No holes to be seen or damage or signs of burning. So this pretty much clears up the fact that if these did sustain damage, it was likely very minor. One of these ships was listed at the time and was taken to dry dock. We saw that on satellite imagery immediately after the attack. But as you can see, it's left dry dock pretty quickly and has been moved here. 
I assume it took a glancing blow on the side which caused a small hole, causing it to listen, causing it to need to be hastily patched. Here, the Ivan curs. So she isn't in dry dock, but there are signs of damage at the rear, what looks to be a hole at the back of the ship. This is the one you may remember which was seen on earlier satellite imagery, being supported by another ship to stop it from keeling over. It's since been moved here to a repair bay with a crane nearby. So this one is damaged, we don't know how badly, but it appears that the storm shadow penetrated and detonated inside. Now after that storm shadow strike it was reported that three storm shadows impacted. One we saw afterwards was a miss, impacting on a dock near the Yamal. One was reported by Russia to be a dud that hit a ship but didn't detonate. And the third one, given the fact the Ivan Curse needed to be supported by a second ship initially, looks like it impacted on her. I wonder if it was the dud missile that hit the Rs of, causing minor damage because, well, a missile impacting on the ship regardless of if it detonates or not is going to cause some damage which will need repairing, but didn't detonate and so didn't cause enough damage to cause it to need an extended repair or destroy it. Now, while we're checking satellite imagery, let's have a quick visit to Nova Resisk. Not too much to report from here, it's pretty much the same ships we've seen in the past. Three kilos in the subpen and a decoy painted on the dock which isn't going to fool anybody. An Admiral Grigorovich class frigate and a 22160 are also seen here. Here, some of the surviving transport ships, a Rapua, an Ivan Gren and an Alligator. And at the bottom, we can see the second Grigorovich class frigate. Finally, in this section, a lot of ships, three more Rapuas as well as a bunch of various patrol vessels and some Buyan M missile corvettes. Some nice targets here if Ukraine decides to hit this base. And before we finish, a quick visit to the dry docks. Here you can see that Nova Resist dry docks are empty. Last time we checked in the last batch of satellite imagery, there was an unrecognised ship, which appeared to be military given the grey colour, was inside. Now, that one's gone and the dock is empty. I expect it won't be long until it gets filled again. So, that's it for this video. Now before we finish, here's a video from Sanaf about the new fundraiser that we're starting, with a nice view of the typical UK weather which I hope clears up next week, as next Wednesday I'm going to be heading back to England to visit my family again. I'll play the video now, thanks so much, and take care everybody. Hello Zucker Mimers community, my name is Sanef, thank you very much for your very kind donations for the earlier fundraisers that we ran in January and February. The evacuation drones that you helped supply are out there in the east, right at the front line, in constant service, supporting the battalion. They make a really big difference. Uh, you should have seen that already on the channel because we have published content. But what you haven't seen is this Mitsubishi Shogun that was purchased with the earlier fundraiser. I am now in the UK. I've been working on this for about a month and it's just about ready to take over to, to Ukraine to do service out there. Very much appreciate your support with the new fundraiser for the Mitsubishi L200 and the additional components that we're going to be loading into that vehicle. Thank you very much.